what's up? It's Megan. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to be telling you about when I decided that I was some kind of pageant bitch. Before this video starts, please click like and subscribe and don't forget to hit that notification bell. This experience was truly wild. Um, I was in my senior year of high school when I discovered this pageant world of sorts and I decided that I wanted to be a part of it. You know, it looked fun. Like there was, you know, like a stage and you can wear cool outfits and there's like an interview and you can pick a platform and spread awareness on it. And I was super into that idea. So I decided I'm gonna do this. Naturally, I became the Canadian teen miss for this pageant system. When I went to nationals down in the States, it was such a crazy experience. Let me tell you about some of the craziest moments of that weekend because if I mentioned everything that happened that week, this would be like an hour long video. So first off, before the pageant began, I was taking it very seriously. <laughs> Like I didn't want to spend all this money and go all the way down to the States to just like not try and win. My goal was to try and make it to top 15. Spoiler alert, didn't happen. Before the actual pageant, I decided to get coaching. I chose a coach who was very familiar with the pageant system. A lot of people really loved. So I was like, you know what? Like I'm gonna go with like one of the best coaches. <laughs> We did so many sessions where we would practice my interview skills, practicing all these like really difficult questions about like women's rights, climate change, and things I want to do with my future, and why I want to win this title of being Miss whatever the fuck. And I was so nervous about the interview. Like I had made notes, and then when I got to the actual pageant itself, I had booked a like walking learning session with a really popular famous pageant coach. and. When when I got to my session, it was just literally a small ass hotel room. And I was like, how are you gonna teach me how to walk in here? She barely did, like she kind of helped. So I really didn't learn that much. I was so optimistic. I was like, it's fine. I still learned lots. It was a cool experience and I don't regret any of this. So I'm working really hard on my interview training. I'm so nervous about it and it's finally time for interviews. My hair looked like crap. My hair and makeup that weekend cost me $1,000 because I thought I was paying for the best. So I pay her $1,000 and my hair looked like this. Okay, this is not okay. And I was really upset about it, but I moved on, I was like, whatever. So I get into the interview room, all the judges were at different tables and you had to stand with your back facing the judges. And then when the timer was like, beep, you like turn around and like sit down. And you only got like a minute and 30 seconds with each judge for timing wise, right? I sit down with the first judge and she's just like, tell me a bit about yourself. Went to the next judge. So. Tell me a bit about yourself. Every single judge just asked, Tell me a bit about yourself. Which one, this coach did not prepare me for at all. She said that it was gonna be asked like once or twice maybe, and then they're gonna get straight to the point. She never said that that's how they expected everyone to come and have that prepared so you can get straight into your platform. She never told me this, okay? I kid you not. One motherfucking judge, she goes, Oh my God, I have a friend in Canada. And I was like, oh, really? That's cool. Waiting to get into my spiel of things. And she goes, his name's Rob. And I was like, cool. So anyway, I wanted to tell you about this, this, and this. And she's like, I bet you know Rob. Do you know Rob? You know Rob. And I was like, no, I, I don't know. Um, where is he from? Like, just trying to be nice and impress this judge. And she goes, Rob from Quebec. Rob from Quebec, you must know him. And I was like, oh, well, Quebec is like above New York. And then, you know, I'm in Vancouver, which is above Seattle, right? So I don't think I know Rob from Quebec. Her face, like she was so stunned about the fact that like Canada that was that large. Like this is a problem I run into on an everyday basis, but someone who's supposed to be judging a national title and they don't know basic geography. Some people out there in our nation don't have maps and uh, I believe that our ed education like such as in South Africa and uh, the Iraq everywhere like such as and so this pageant was like a week long you had to show up for registration day and like and then there's the days where it's interviews and then talent which I did not do 
So it was just like this week long process. The first day we got there, I met like, you know, all the other girls and they're like just perfect and it always looked like this and their hair was like big and curled and beautiful. And I got to know this one girl pretty well. She was really nice. And let's name this girl Sherry. So Sherry was not there the next day when I went to go to rehearsals for this like opening number dance thing. And I'm like, where did Sherry go? So um, it turns out that Sherry um, had to leave the pageant because she found out that she was pregnant because she could not compete for a teen title as a pregnant teen. So there were lots of rehearsals throughout the week and the reigning royalty had to be there for all of it and just like looked at everyone up and down like they were actual royalty. And I was like, um, bitch, you spent money on getting a pageant title and then just took photos all year. That's not why I signed up. I signed up because I wanted to spread the message about something. The thing about these rehearsals is that all of them were themed. It was like polka dot day, wear your places colors day. And I showed up in like a, like a onesie, whereas all the other girls showed up in like cute little like cheerleader outfits. <laughs> like I literally wore like a Canadian onesie. <laughs> So it was really hard to just like make a friend because they were all so like pretend nice but like they really want to like make sure they beat you in competition so they aren't going to actually be your friend. It was a very cold environment, very... The energy was just very cold and like mean. It was so weird. We all had to go dress up every freaking day to go to this freaking rehearsals and the royalty were absolute bitches. They were literally pointing and laughing at some girls and like visibly making fun of them. They didn't really pay attention to me because no one really knew who I was because I was like from Canada. Also just want to mention that each royalty had to give like their entire people in their category a gift and my girl who was going on as a teen gave us all a pillowcase with her face on it. These girls were just so rude, but there was this one girl I really just want to mention. <laughs> Let's call her Becky. So Becky was everything you would expect of a pageant princess, like big blonde hair, big boobs, like perfect cinched in waist. I'm going to take off my glasses so you can really see. She was always like this and she always talked like this and her voice was like really soft, kind of like Crystal's voice from The Bachelor if you ever watched that and like she just like always was like this and in a la la land of happiness and dreams. That was Becky, okay? And Becky was great entertainment for me. Sometimes I just sit back and just kind of observe Becky doing her thing and I'd be like, huh, Becky. One of the main rules of the weekend is absolutely no phones in the rehearsals, the change rooms, or backstage. Phones are not to come into that area at all because I guess there was a year prior where a girl had like accidentally taken a photo, posted it on Facebook, and a girl's tit was out or something in the background. So there's a huge rule. If you bring your phone in there and it is seen, you're going to be disqualified. And that was repeated through the whole damn week. But Becky, she didn't give a shit. Becky was like, strip shit off her boobs a little bit like this, and she like, like the whole damn weekend. Becky did not give a fuck. Outside of like the main rehearsal area, there was this big like dress shop and all of the dresses were a size double zero, zero, two, or four. Nothing else above that. And I was on a size six or eight when I entered this. I couldn't have fit any of the dresses. Like if you had gotten a size four dress, it was like, oh honey, that's sad. And that's really sad. Like what the fuck, bitch? Like size six or eight is not bad. Even if you're size 20, I don't give a shit. You still look beautiful. Like it was just like such an awful, gross culture. It was so weird. But I happened to be there when Becky and her mom were shopping. So Becky was in this bright Barbie pink satin ball gown. And she's like looking at herself, looking at herself like this and being like, hmm. All of a sudden my mom and I hear her being like, And everyone was like, and I was like, oh, Becky, start this entertainment for me, please, bitch, yes. Oh, I loved Becky, man. Becky is just having this absolute shit fit because her mom told her she didn't want to buy her the dress. That was $1,000, by the way. And Becky was not having it. Becky's like, I don't even like my other dress now. I want to look like a Barbie, mommy, please, 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 please. I want to look like a fucking Barbie. 
Like that was her energy the entire time. Like just crocodile tears, screaming. It was absolutely amazing. I could not get enough of it personally. And her mom was like, fine baby, like it's okay. Like I'm so sorry, like I'll buy you it, I'll buy you it. And her mom just fucking dropped a thousand dollars. Like it was $2 at the dollar store for her kid to look like her Barbie on the stage at the pageant. It was like a whole other world. It's like I stepped into another dimension, you know? But here's the thing about Becky. So she still had her phone and everything, right? Before she would even go on stage, she would still have her phone in her hand. She would just slip it into the boob of her dress and then go on stage and like do her thing. This bitch made it to top 15. So after the second night there, after this like pajama party, which was a total lame thing anyway, all of like the teen girls decided we're all gonna go to Cheesecake Factory. And about half of us went. So I was like, oh yeah, I'm super down. I wanna go to Cheesecake Factory, like fuck me up. I love cheesecake, right? The waiter comes over and she's like, oh, are you guys ready to order? Like, how's everything going? And I was like, hell yes, bitch. I was the first to order, which was my first mistake. <laughs> Um, I was like, oh, can I please have like a white chocolate raspberry cheesecake, please? Because it's my go-to. I fucking love that shit, man. And when I look after I order, all the girls are looking at me like this. But just jaws dropped. I was like, what the heck? Like, were they just like jealous of my cheesecake order? Like, what's happening? She goes to the next girl and she's like, I'll have a salad, but can you please leave out the croutons? I'm trying to cut on my carbs. And then the next girl was like, oh, I'll have a cheesecake slice too. And I was like, yes, you're my bitch. Like, we're bitches. We're friends now. You know, all the girls are either just ordering literally nothing until we get to this one chick. And she goes, hi, yeah, can I please have a bowl of peas? Like just a bowl of peas, please. And the waiter was like, oh, like like salted, like edamame. And the girl was like, no, like just a bowl of peas. Thank you. Cause she was so worried about not fitting into her dress. And then by the time she got on that stage, that dress, like it was falling off of her. I really did not expect it to be so much like the movies. I thought that I would be able to eat a slice of cheesecake without being judged for it. No, it was very much just, you know, bowls of peas kind of bitches. So while we're on the topic of food, one morning I got into the elevator and one of the bitchiest girls in the teen category happened to be in the same elevator and I was super effing hungry. I'm hypoglycemic so like I need sugar when I'm hungry like I black out. On my way to breakfast with my mom to have a proper meal I quickly grabbed two cookies just to like amp up my sugar in my body just to like get myself there and I walk into the elevator and I'm like munching on my M&M cookies. This girl is standing there with her mom perfect looking like absolutely perfectly done. She looks at me and she goes cookies for breakfast? Just like that. And I looked at her and I said, yeah, cookies for breakfast. One afternoon, my mom and I decided we're gonna have a nap. Like this whole experience was so exhausting because we were constantly walking from the hotel to the theater and where the rehearsals are. So I'm like cozying on up, having a good nap. And all of a sudden the fire alarm in the hotel went off. And I'm like, are you kidding me? And my mom and I are on the 22nd floor of this hotel. People were like knocking on doors being like, it's real, like you need to get down. So I get my passport just to make sure I have that. Go into the hallway and all these girls are carrying their wardrobe above them like this, like running around panicking. And I'm almost at the bottom. I'm on floor motherfucking two, okay? And people start coming back up like, oh, it was a false alarm, it was a false alarm. And by the way, I'm in my pajamas and that weekend you were not allowed to be seen just roaming around your pajamas. If you left the hotel room even to go get a snack from the vending machine, you had to be dressed and look appropriate. Your makeup had to be done, your hair had to be done, you had to look good. Which should have been my first clue into never fucking do this. I am standing outside. I'm gonna go see my friend from the Cheesecake Factory. Her and I get each other on a level. So I'm like, what the hell happened? And she goes, did you not hear what happened? And I was like, no. She's like, well, this one girl mom needed to hang up her dress to steam her dress and she hung it up on the sprinkler in their hotel room which then caused the sprinkler to go off in their hotel room and a bunch of the floor out in the hallway and also caused everyone to evacuate the building and I was like are you kidding me who does that like it even has a thing that says do not hang and a bunch of the girls dresses I guess like got almost ruined because of this I think that wraps up 
everything for the most part. I look back at that, I'm like, why the hell do I even do that? Like, I'm just so not that person. Like this whole experience, like they marketed it as like this like inclusive, like amazing thing. You know, I was going through a lot of shit, so I thought this was gonna be a really positive experience. But honestly, by the end of it, it cost me like five to $6,000. And I could have gone to Hawaii with that money, but I thought I was like putting my money into a really cool experience. I hope you like this video. Please don't forget to click like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification button. Bye!